Hey there gamers, welcome to Rockwell Studios. Today I want to tell you the story about how I made my first game, Potions. When I started the project, I was just a beginner, but I was determined to find out what it's really like to make an indie game. Not just start a game, but finish it. Like many, I'd always dreamed of making a game, but the reality is, developing games is a complex process and requires many skills, including writing code, which is something that I had never done before. But by 2020, I had started picking up the basics and tinkering in Unity. So when we were faced with a COVID lockdown, I thought, now's the time to try and make a game and finish it. The goal was to make something small, 2D, and above all, learn as much as possible about game development and the process. As you can see here by my in-depth development board, I had an idea that I wanted to create a food truck, but instead of selling food, you're selling potions. That same day, I started making notes for what would be something called Spellcraft Potions for Sale, which I'd shorten to potions. The only real way I was going to make a game was by using an existing game engine, so I went with Unity. After completing an in-depth design document, I started with the first sprites. My girlfriend jumped on board at this point and started helping out with some of the background sprites and also she drew up a bunch of different ingredients. The first script I worked on was a drag and drop mechanic that would allow me to pick up ingredients and potions and throw them around. Here you can see the first recorded gameplay. You can grab ingredients from the drawer, throw them into the pot, and if you get the right combination, you can make a potion and serve it to the customers that didn't exist yet. Then one night, I awoke from my slumber, realizing, wait a second, I've seen this before. It had been nearly 20 years since I had played the game Legend of Kyrandia. And in this wonderful point and click adventure by Westwood Studios, there's a scene where you go into a witch's hut, and there she has a cauldron. You put different ingredients into the cauldron, and it changes the color of the liquid inside. Then you grab your bottle, and you fill up your potions. It even has this crazy glass tube that I had somehow drawn almost perfectly without having looked at the reference material for two decades. So next time you think you're having a great idea, just remember, you probably stole it from somewhere. Accidental sprite theft aside, we carried on with the game, updating the sprites and the gameplay, and it's humbling to know we never even got close to what Westwood Studios was doing 20 years ago. As you can see here, I didn't let perfectionism get in the way. To be honest, any time I got anything working, it was like a miracle. I was really getting hooked on this game development thing. The next thing we needed were some customers. And here you can see the first human character in all his glory. We changed him. But the dwarf? He stayed the same right till the end. Customers order a random potion and you have a certain amount of time to make them before they get angry and leave. Picking up ingredients one at a time was no fun, so I made this really janky telekinesis spell that allowed you to pick up multiple ingredients at once and chuck them in the pot. After six weeks of development, potions were starting to take shape in its own unique way. Because this was an experimental project, any time I came up against something that I didn't know how to do, I decided to take the time and learn it staples such as menu systems and loading and saving the game. I added this ledger that popped up at the end of each day to show you how you were doing. Also there was a map with four different regions that you could travel to, and here you can see a little frog going crazy. In each region you would find new customers, new ingredients and new recipes to learn. There were special customers, holy acolytes and evil agents that would give you a random recipe that you had to make and they would either bless you or curse you. For the intro of the game, my girlfriend drew an exterior of the potion cart and I added this terrible logo, which then I updated. While it wasn't perfect, I had spent around four months on potions and at this stage I thought it was a fun little game that maybe I could publish on itch.io and move on to the next project. I uploaded a trailer to YouTube and a demo to itch.io to see if there was anybody interested in playing potions. A few people did play the demo, and those that left comments left really positive comments. It was very encouraging. By now, I had an overview of how the game would play out. 
you would start by meeting a merchant who would let you know that you needed to earn a certain amount of gold to travel to the next region and you only had 10 days to make the gold you needed. When I posted the trailer to Reddit, I got a really good response. Might have been a bit naive of me, but I thought, hey, maybe potions is worth developing. Maybe there's a game here that some people will want to play. I didn't have any marketing plan or online presence, so I thought, maybe I'll publish the game to Steam and through Steam, get some eyeballs on potions. I thought maybe potions was close to being done, but looking back, I realized it was nowhere near finished at least not good enough to put on Steam. Maybe I should have just quit here, but I came up with a plan to add a bit more depth to potions. One of my original constraints was that I didn't want there to be any combat or even health in the game. I wanted to find other ways to make gameplay fun. In the first demo, you would use your mana to cast spells like telekinesis or to launch ingredients into the pot and you would restore mana by drinking a mana potion. And I thought there should be more potion drinking in potions. So I finally caved and added a health system. But now I needed something to remove your health, so you could restore health with health potions. Bandits would come and attempt to rob your cart, demanding a free potion that was made from random ingredients. And if you didn't make it fast enough, they would hit you, damaging your health. Because I didn't want you to be able to fight back, I added a banish spell that would allow you to banish them from your store, however it did cost a lot of mana. To find more reasons to drink potions, I added a temperature system, which would make the temperature in the cart go up in the desert and fall in the mountains, and you would need to drink resist heat and resist cold potions to stop yourself from getting heat stroke or frostbite. Goblin raiders would attack with poisonous blades, and you would need to drink cure poison to get rid of the effect. While my confidence around development was building, I still had this nagging feeling. Is anybody actually going to want to play this game? One night, I was searching the web and came across a site called Game Round or G Round. G Round is a playtesting service where they take unfinished games and let their community of players try out a demo and then feedback on it. I filled out the form on the website and sent a build of potions, not really expecting much to come of it. But a little while later, I got an email and the friendly folks at G-Round were offering a four-week playtest for potions. So I got to work, trying to make potions as polished as possible, at least in the first three regions. I added some final touches, and the time for the playtest came around quickly. When the playtest first started and people began streaming the game, I was terrified to tune in. I was so scared that I made a terrible game and no one was going to enjoy it. But as the streamers started streaming, my fear subsided as I saw people having a great time with potions. Come on, come and get your potions! Hey, don't hit me. Actually, I can make everything here. Look at this! Look at this, I'm gonna win crazy now! Ah, oh, goodness gracious. Uh, get out of here. Get out of here! Night vision unlock. Let me come on that. Sight. Chop. Hahaha. my ness. No free potions for you, my boy. Is it not? Am I wrong? I'm poisoned. What was it? Oh, it was a feather as well. Um. There you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the G Round community was awesome. A lot of people posted VODs and streams, and reviews started coming in from all around the world. When I was designing potions, I thought people might see it and think it's a bit of an easy casual game, so I made the game quite difficult. Difficult to the point where I had a hard time beating it, but that translated to new players finding it almost impossible to beat. So after a few patches and four weeks of playtesting, I received some invaluable feedback about how people found playing potions. Most of the feedback was positive and a lot of people really enjoyed playing potions. So I decided it is worth finishing. I'm going back into development. Drawing on the feedback I received from the playtesting, I decided to change the overall font and a lot of the UI layout because people were having trouble reading the old font. 
after experimenting with an external package called Fluxy, which is a 2.5D fluid simulator, I added this really cool smoke to the cauldron that would react to the ingredients and the potions and change color with the liquid. Instead of buying recipes and spells from the recipe book, I added a shop where you could buy ingredients, recipes, spells, and even maps to different regions. There was now a limit to how many ingredients you could purchase in any given day, so you couldn't just make a gazillion potions. I wanted to make the overall game experience a lot more relaxed, so it was less of a race against the clock, and more of a fun flow to the game. So the 10 day deadline to make gold to move on to the next region was removed. Now you could travel back and forth from region to region, buying spells, recipes and ingredients at your leisure. Well, not quite your leisure. I decided the main aim of the game now was that you had to get to the city in order to get a permit to sell potions, otherwise you'd be shut down. The time limit was much longer, but you'd have to unlock every region along the way to find your way to the city. Anyone who makes video games or attempts to make video games knows just how hard that can be. I was still making progress with potions, but there was no real deadline and no real end in sight. Every time I worked through my to-do list, fixing bugs, adding art, adding sound, adding gameplay, I'd find more and more things to fix, more and more things to add. It really felt like it was never going to get done. When I first decided to publish potions, I had signed up for Unity's Pro subscription to get rid of the watermark. This was quite an expensive yearly cost, and the first 12 months of the subscription was nearly done. I only had a couple of weeks left before renewal. But by now I was pretty confident in my game dev abilities. So I said to myself, I'm going to get this game done before I have to pay another year of that gosh darn subscription. So I cleared my calendar, changed my IDE theme for the thousandth time, and I got to work finishing potions. It's amazing what you can get done when you've got a deadline. And that last two weeks was really the most productive of the whole project. My pacifist gameplay was finally broken when I added offensive spells to the game that you could use to combat enemies trying to attack your cart. I added a ton more drinkable potions that would counteract negative effects or give positive buffs and a messaging system to let you know what was going on in the game. In order to flesh out the arc of the game a bit more, I added three dragon temples of increasing difficulty where you would go to face dragon priests in battle, and if you defeat them, you'd unlock essences that would help you make more powerful, more expensive potions. It really is hard to describe just how many things you have to do to finish a game, and even harder to know when a game really is finished. I guess that's why they say a project is never finished, it's only abandoned. And so I reached my deadline, and to me, the game was ready to launch. Unfortunately, the Unity subscription was set to auto-renew, and I had paid for another year. But realistically, there was no way I was going to publish a game and then never have a need to make another build again. I was always going to have to make bug fixes and patches and hopefully make more content for potions as time went on. As I said, I never really had a marketing plan for potions, and I knew this would have a big impact on how many people would learn about the game and discover it in general. But that was never really what it was about. It was about starting a journey, walking every step along the way, and hopefully making it to the end. And while making this game has been the most difficult and challenging project I've ever worked on, I never would have made it without all the amazing software, tools, and people out there sharing their knowledge about how games get made. I didn't want to make a devlog along the way because I wasn't confident enough in my abilities and I didn't want to make any promises I wasn't going to keep. But now that I've finished the game, I do have the confidence to say, here's a game I made and I'm really proud of it. And if it's not your cup of tea, well, I'm glad you stuck around to hear my story anyway. So here we are at the end of the journey. But really, I hope it's just the beginning because game development is something I've fallen in love with and something I want to keep as a big part of my life. Potions is available now on Steam or itch.io. I'll continue making games and learning about game dev, and if you do decide to buy the game, you'll be supporting me directly in my quest to continue the journey of learning the art 
of making video games. As I roll a few super accurate stats across the screen, I just wanted to say obviously this video hasn't been a mechanical look at how games get developed, but more of an overview of the journey, what it's like to really go through the game making process. Obviously there's a distinction between in-depth programming and game design and luckily because there's all this framework here these days I get to just come in and start designing games without having to build everything from scratch. Even with all these advantages I still thought the main thing I'd need for game development was going to be mathematics, code knowledge and just big brain stuff in general. But really what it came down to was patience, persistence and having the willingness to learn every time you come up against something that you don't understand, which for me was all the time. So if you're on your game dev journey, I hope you stick with it and keep seeing what's around the corner. Until next time, good luck friend. <laughs>